up. Okay, let's get right to the text for Dr. Tom. Hugging my wife and kids difficult from six feet away. Is there a way to snuggle safely, Tom, without feeling like I'm endangering my family? I still work outside of my home daily. Well, I, well, I would tell you this, you know, when you, it's about protecting your home. You know, I think that people in close quarters like that, unless someone had COVID-19, I think inside your environment, it's okay for you to, you know, enjoy your family and spend close to, uh, quarters with them. The key thing is for being outside of the house, making sure when you're coming inside the house that you're making sure you're doing the same kind of things about, you know, getting, uh, cleaning your clothes, you know, making sure you're practicing good kind of quarantine kind of practices, if you will. But really the key thing is to making sure that your home environment is safe and you're able to do that with your close contact of those people that you spend a lot of time with. Okay, next one coming in for Dr. Tom. I have a sore throat, dry cough. I live with my dad who's 75 and a transplant recipient. I'm worried I'm gonna make him sick, but I'm not certain if I have COVID-19 or allergies. So all that said, would a test be wise? Well, I would tell you that symptoms that you that he's really describing right there does not sound specifically like COVID-19. But as we know that there are some people who are asymptomatic and some of those symptoms are minor symptoms of, of COVID-19. But if you don't have outside of fever, shortness of breath, uh, you know, those kind of things, uh, I would say that probably not. But, you know, pay attention to those symptoms. If any of those things get worse, then I think it's more important for you to get that type of test just to know really this is called contact tracing really to be able to find out if you do have something or if you're at risk that you're not spreading it to everybody else so it's a good precaution okay next one coming in uh text for dr tom are different blood types more susceptible to covid 19. uh well at this point we don't really know the answer to that uh again i've said many times that covid 19 the virus is an opportunistic killer. So it's really going to look at those people who have the most vulnerable immune systems, those people who have the more chronic diseases we outlined, but not specifically for a blood test. A blood type right now uh, is more susceptible than others. All right, next one coming in, Tom. We may have talked about this offline the other day. Um, do I constantly need to wash my hands even on days when I don't leave the house? My hands are getting seriously chapped. I guess the only time you'd really need to keep doing that is if you have people who come over. No, you know what I would say for everyone, you know, uh, hand washing, this is hand washing 101, you just be even before COVID-19, just assume that everything in your house has a potential of harboring different time, type of germs, not just COVID-19, but all other sorts of germs. So it's important for you to continue you know, routine hand wa washing as a practice, okay. even in your home. Yeah, I guess. Do it and, and we'll just keep it doing for, for yeah, just keep going. Uh, next one coming in for Dr. Tom. Should essential employees be checked for oxygen saturation as well as fever when they report to work? You know, well, if, uh, not at this point that that's a specific thing to, to uh, check. There's not, it's not specific if someone, you don't know the range of someone's uh, oxygen saturation. So that's not something that is, uh, to be a standard of doing that. You know, some employers are really want to safeguard their essential workers. They want to safeguard their environment, making sure people don't have COVID-19 uh, and are checking fevers, but saturations in itself is not another tool to do that. I think that just really just, you know, the individual having the responsibility about social distancing, wearing facial coverings, all of those things when they're outside in their environment is something that we need to do. Uh, but not specifically as a screening tool of saturations. Okay, next one coming in for Dr. Tom. Are other illnesses like the regular flu going away due to the stay at home? Or regular flu was kind of at the tail end anyway, wasn't it? Yeah, it's really at the kind of the tail end. This is still, you know, we're, we're beyond what we would say, almost beyond what we say the uh, influenza season. This would be the tail end of that. Uh, but again, when you look at what's happening now, our social distancing, the way we're sanitizing, washing our hands, uh, being aware of uh, COVID-19, it's really going to change the way we, we think about dealing with viruses, including the flu season. So we're more likely, these things, the good side, it's really going to help shape our future uh, flu seasons in a great way by everybody knowing what they need to do and by doing their part. Uh, next one, Tom, should I be calling hospitals to see if they're offering the test? 
or do I schedule one with a doctor? As you know, uh, Cal Expo has a drive through uh, and anybody can go there and they, they're like not that busy. Right. Again, well, you know, it's not just that everyone needs to be tested per se. It's really looking at do you have what type of symptoms, what kind of exposure that you've had, and those would be the indications for being directed uh, to go getting a test. And there are now, of course, so we're talking about everybody worry about getting back to some normalcy and opening up businesses and whatnot. It's really going to be dependent upon us having the ability to identify people who could have COVID. 19, identify those people who may have immunity to uh, COVID-19 so that we can get back to normal. But those things are going to take some time. Yeah, indeed. Okay, we're going to have more 